Do you remember lava lamps and flared trousers and extra long saxophone solos? Because if you did, you probably remember the early 70s and the JBL L100 loudspeaker. I don't know why I was laughing. So all I've just lost it when I said extra long saxophone solos. But anyway, if you remember all of that, you will remember the early 70s and JBL loudspeakers, the L100 with the orange grills, a bit like those behind me, but these are not the originals. These are the L100 classic. Now JBL have maintained the walnut veneer. You can only get these in a walnut veneer. And they've got, you can see the bright orange Quadrex grills, which are also available, I believe, in blue or black. But come on, like orange is the only color here, really, if you want to really mainline that early 70s vibe. But I think it's important to point out very early on that these are not your father's JBLs. These are not the JBLs from that classic Maxell advert. Think of what Technics or Panasonic did with the Technics SL1200 a few years ago. They relaunched it and it looked the same as the older version of the SL1200 or 1210, but the insides were completely different. It was a brand new turntable. So basically it was the same skin, but with all new skeleton and guts. And that's what JBL have done here. So it looks like exactly like the old L100, but internally it's completely different. So if we pop off one of the Quadrex grills, we see three drivers. This is a three-way. These are, well, they look like the old drivers, but they're not. Apparently these are all new designs developed at the Harmon Research Facility in Northridge, California. So basically we've got 12 inch paper driver for the base. We've got a five and a bit inch mid, mid range driver just above that. And then above that is a one inch titanium dome tweeter. Round the back on the inside, we can't see it, but it is my understanding that the crossover is all new. So this is a crossover that's not built with 1970s thinking or components. It's built with 2020 thinking, or rather 2018, I think this came out, 2018 thinking, 2018 components. <laughs> So unlike that classic Maxell advert, we don't put these speakers on the floor. The stands that you see here are really, they're not optional. They're really a compulsory extra. So that's an extra few hundred bucks for you to consider. Also on the front baffle, next to the tweeter, are two tone controls. Now some purists might now see that as heresy. Maybe it wasn't heresy back in the day. But right now in 2020, a lot of people are very anti-tone control. Anyway, I think tone controls are very useful. So you can adjust the mid-range and you can adjust the tweeter output as well. Quite subtly, actually, these are not dramatic um, results you get when you turn them, but they're good for tuning the speaker according to the sort of acoustic makeup of your room. So if it's lively, you might want to dial it down. And if it's a bit you know, over damped, you can dial it up a little bit, but there's nothing for the bass. So how do they sound? Well, when I took delivery of these about six weeks ago, maybe a bit longer, I expected some kind of fat, chunky, warm, unresolving, but very, um, I guess a, a cuddly sound, like a sound that sort of hugs you. I expected all of that, and that is absolutely not what I hear from these loudspeakers. 
And one thing's for sure, these JBLs are very different to the, for me, outgoing Klipsch Forte 3. Now, let me just address this for a moment because I get comments, emails uh, from viewers and readers asking like, what happened to that speaker or that amp? Don't you like it anymore? It has nothing to do whether I like it or love it or, you know, or not. It's all to do with the fact that being an audiophile is my job. So I review gear all year round. So things are going to be swapped in and out often. And very often pieces of gear will sit in my storage unit sort of over there for months and then they come out again. So please don't think that just because the clips have gone away that I don't like them anymore. I love the clips, love them. But today I want to talk about how they differ to the JBLs because the JBLs are a very different type of speaker, even though they sell for almost the same money, about $4,000, euros, pounds? I'm not sure about pounds. remember the Fatima Mansions, sort of a, a very caustic um, indie band formed by Carl Cochran who used to sing for Micro Disney. So this is their, oh let me get this right, second album Valhalla Avenue which came out in 91 or 92. So this is kind of a fairly aggressive rock indie record with some very strong ballads. So Carl Cochran has a voice that's like Scott Walker. So it's a very unusual record. So I played it just before I moved the clips out, I listened to this album and then immediately put the JBLs in and then listened to this album again. And one thing I noticed that had instantly disappeared from the scene was the sort of like the collar grab that the clips give you. That presence region excitement just doesn't show up in these JBLs. So that's the first difference is the JBL is not as exciting to listen to as the clips. Whether that's a bad thing or a good thing is for you to decide, not me. I've been trying to get this record into a video for a while, so I'm just going to pull it out because I've been listening to this album a lot recently. This is Julian Cope's uh, Peggy Suicide that came out in 91. In the early 90s, Julian Cope made three amazing records. This one, then the one after Jehovah Kill, and the one after that was called Autogeddon. Just brilliant records. So again, a lot of very strong also, fairly Scott Walker-esque type vocals on here, Julian Cope has. Um, so listening to this through the JBLs and, you know, after the clips, I, I really was struck by how less coloured the JBLs are than the clips. So yeah, we lose some excitement, but we also lose colour. And colour can be a good thing, it is with the clips, but not for everybody, especially in the mid-range. So for me, these are, these, JBL L100 classics are much more transparent, more revealing in the mid-range than the Klipsch. And really that leads me to, to conclude, not that we're at the conclusion yet, but to think that the JBLs are a much more balanced speaker than the Klipsch, top to bottom. <laughs> Now, those of you that remember my clips video will remember that I had them on <laughs> on uh, Möbelhunde. What are Möbelhunde? Casters? Or, yeah, something like that. Anyway, on wheels. And they were placed right up against the wall because, to me, that's how they sounded best. Now, the JBLs, I can't do that. Can't put them on wheels <laughs> and definitely can't put them close to the wall. They need some breathing space. Even though they've got a front-firing port, they need to be pulled out because there's a lot more low-end weight both the Klipsch and the JBL go down to around 40 hertz, but the JBLs just give us more shove and more in-room heft. So th if I had to pick which one was the better suited to smaller rooms, definitely the Klipsch. I've had to play around with the position of these quite a bit more than I did with the Klipsch. And I don't think these are going to be well suited to smaller rooms. They're just I think the bass may 
become too much. You, you, we might get too much speaker for the room. If that's a thing, it is a thing. Now that extra weight from the JBL means that in the low end, especially, they're not quite as fast as the Klipsch. Not quite. And it also means that, and from my limited experimentation with amplifier matching, you gotta be a lot more careful. So with the Klipsch, I could just use the shit Ajir monoblocks, no problem, it would sound amazing. With these monoblocks with the JBLs, mm, I'm not so sure. So I moved over to the Brooklyn amp, which is the matching amp that goes with the Brooklyn Bridge from my tech. I've made a video about that before. I'll put a link up here because I wanted that class D low end control. I wanted it to have a really tight grip on that bass driver because I think that really matters with the JBLs much more than the Klipsch. In case you think I have forgotten about techno, oh no I haven't, still listen to a lot of techno. This is a newish album from Regis, this is just pure cold techno that just rolls and rolls and rolls. Many people would call it broken washing machine music, that's fair enough, I get that. But listening to that and the Julian Cope and the Fatima Mansions and also a Robin Hitchcock EP that he just made with Andrew Partridge. And Andrew Partridge, Andrew Partridge, Andy Partridge. Um, I would say that in terms of uh, top end air and treble extension, the JBLs really do have it all over the clips. I think these are a much more revealing speaker and revealing the recording space, if it's in the recording that is. Obviously, there's no recording space in a techno record from Regis. But in the Julian Cope, Sometimes you can hear more of the studio, definitely from the JBLs than the Klipsch. So I think that's kind of interesting. I'd also say the JBLs treble is a lot smoother. The Klipsch sometimes can be a bit coarse. It's not as coarse as it used to be, but no, nah, the JBLs super smooth, very strong on pulling out delicacy and finesse in a recording, or even maybe they're layering it over, I don't know. And it's the delicacy and finesse that the, really the Klipsch can only dream of. But talking about sound quality isn't just a matter of slicing the frequency spectrum three ways, treble, mid, and bass. There's more to it than that. So I would say that in terms of imaging, so the illusion of a soundstage and points placed on that soundstage, the JBL are the winner for me. They image much better than the Klipsch do. Now that may be because of positioning, so maybe up against the wall with the Klipsch, they're not quite as effective as they could be. I don't know. But where they stand and where I've used the clips before, the JBL's image, I guess more elegantly, more gracefully, it's not just about being needle point specific. Because if I wanted that, I'd probably go to an active speaker like the Key 3. But these are just a little bit more sort of majestic in their painting of a soundstage. Some of you are going to hate that word, aren't they? I'm going to get letters. You use the word majestic, what does that mean? Anyway, um, the JBL also, because of their superior top end extension, give us a much closer look at music's inner space and also instrument sounds surface textures. So if you want to know which is the most detailed of the two speakers, definitely the JBL. The Klipsch almost get there, but the JBL win out pretty much every time. However, the Klipsch still shade the JBL on dynamics. It's not that the L100 Classic are dynamically shy, not at all. And even in microdynamics, they're still, this is still a very strong speaker, dynamically speaking. Exceptionally so. It's just that they, <laughs> you know, the Klipsch are some of the, the world's most dynamic sounding speakers to me. And it's just a race that the JBL could never win. Not that it's really a competition, but 
You won't be disappointed by the dynamics of the JBL, but it's just not clipped levels, that's all. This is one of my favourite records from 89, and I managed to track down another copy with the, uh, the free poster. The other is Mind Bomb. This is a, <laughs> yeah, this is a very good record to listen to right now in these times that we're living in. Armageddon days are here again indeed. Anyway, the L100 Classic is definitely more of a hi-fi speaker than the Klipsch. The Klipsch are more coloured. From a subjective listening point of view, I would say the JBL is technically the better speaker. It sort of ticks more audiophile boxes. But this is the lesson for today, actually. <laughs> the lesson for today, according to John, is that just because the JBL <laughs> is ticks more audiophile boxes, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the most pleasurable to listen to. Because the clips have qualities that I like, the JBL have qualities that I like, and also don't like on both sides. I mean, I don't like the fact that I really have to mess around with placement. Yeah, one of the downsides, I guess, is that when I really push volume, push sound pressure levels, the bass can become a bit too boomy sometimes in this room, which is what I meant by it's sort of, you know, they're not necessarily best suited to small rooms. I don't have that problem with the Klipsch. The Klipsch have a more mid-range presence. So just because something, you know, subjectively or even objectively is more proficient doesn't mean it's more subjectively pleasurable. So as always, as the cliche goes, you have to listen for yourself. I know that's hard. I guess the chances of you finding a dealer that stocks Klipsch and JBL, I don't know. So some of you, many of you might just have to take a punt. I did. I, actually, I, I bought these and I bought my Klipsch as well. Um, and I just did so on a blind punt. Now let me tell you why I bought these. It was nothing to do with the sound quality. I bought them because of the way they look. I bought them for that 70s nostalgia that sort of mid-century modern appeal, which is why I've got my um, turntable on my low board here. Everything that you can see behind me here is the hi-fi system. There's nothing coming from this rack. So you're probably wondering where the amplifier is. Remember, it's a little Brooklyn amp. It's about this big. It's actually behind, underneath. Underneath the low board, behind those records. So I can tuck it away out of sight. So. This allows me to have a very minimal type setup, which I think is really interesting. Yep, I'm rambling again, aren't I? Obviously, I'm not you. I don't have your priorities necessarily in when it comes to choosing gear. You can tell from this video and from other videos that I've made that aesthetics really matter to me. The way hi-fi gear looks is very important. Loudspeakers for me are furniture that make sound. So I love these JBLs with the grills on and with the grills off. At the moment, the orange here is clashing with the red turntable a little bit. I have been listening mostly with the grills off, but you know I have the option to change up the looks and very dramatically when I want to. We have to be very careful in listening to people that remember the JBL L100 from the first time around. Because a lot of people will say they're only good for rock and roll music. Now, that's not my experience. As you know, I listen to a lot of electronic music. Personally, I prefer the JBLs for electronic music. They're more transparent, more insightful. Um, I really think that I'm probably not gonna get the best from the clips until I put a tube amp on them. I haven't got that yet. If I, you know, if you were asking me which is my favourite of these two speakers, um, I'm going to give the nod to the JBLs. Just because the clips are too coloured and for what I do when I have to assess gear, so I have to listen through a speaker to assess an amplifier or a DAC or a streamer. And so for my job, transparency matters and removing colour matters. So the clips are not a speaker that I really like to review through, whereas the JBL absolutely every time. So make of that what you will. Anyway, if you found this video useful or if you enjoyed it or if you just like to look at some old 
kind of style speakers, then please give us a like. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio that looks matter, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.